Hello, today we are going to have a look at the Scottish Aviation Bulldog. This has been developed by Black Box Simulation, a team of developers. They were previously known for making the Britain Norman Islander in Microsoft Flight Simulator and this is one of their next projects. Uh, I bought it this weekend and did an epic flight the length of the UK in it to learn the aeroplane and it's actually very very good so we're going to jump in and have a fly we're at uh, Wickham Air Park or Booker Airfield in the UK so let's go and step inside and have a look at the aircraft you can see it's wonderfully modeled we have a, a nice um, tutor with us today to teach us how to fly the airplane or to laugh at us as we make mistakes so this is the if we look outside you can see this is the test and the development version of the aircraft you can see it's wonderfully modeled uh, there are several versions the with different liveries um, the different versions actually have different cockpit layouts as well so the RAF and the test and development version both have similar cockpit layouts but the um, the privately owned versions have the six pack of Standard instruments tend to be in front of the pilot with some duplicates over in front of the co-pilot as well. So the RAF and the test one, they have a centralized six pack and more room given for the radios and the engine gauges and things are, are more central to the pilot. OK, so how do we get this thing started up? I'm just going to check my control throws before I get started. So I've got mixture on a throw. I've got... Uh, throttle on a throw let's just make sure i've got rudder is good i've got parking brake should be working yes there it goes so i'll lock it for the moment and we've got elevator trim down here we've got rudder trim we've got flap lever we've got the uh, fuel tank selector so you can see if you hover over these everything has tool tips as it should do in the simulator which is really good one of the hidden features I didn't discover for quite some time is it does have a GPS, which is we'll get onto that in a moment. Um, it's quite basic in terms of the functionality of the radios because this is a late 1960s trainer. So it's a fully aerobatic trainer though, and you will notice there is a G meter, which records the highest and lowest G experienced. And the aircraft is rated for six positive G and three minus G. So you really can throw it around. It's not quite powerful enough to do full 3D aerobatics, but you know if you get into a dive and you can see you can get to 180 knots. So you can um, you can really throw it around. Okay, let's get this thing fired up. Take it for a circuit, and you can see how it performs in the air. So the first thing we're going to do is turn on the battery, the master battery switch over here. Then we're going to turn on the alternator. We're going to turn on the avionics. Then we're going to turn on the pitot heat and we're going to put a white light on underneath the aircraft and whoops, a red light, if I can click on it, it's a bit fiddly, red light underneath the aircraft, we're going to turn on the nav lights and we are going to fire up the engine so we'll turn the magnetos to both, we'll put the mixture on rich we will move the propeller to fine pitch and then we will press the starter button for the engine and hopefully you can hear the engine is now rolling I'm just going to check the sound levels before we go much further so you can at least hear it that's good and we'll cover the hatch on that again and we're pretty much ready to go so now we've powered things up let's go and turn that GPS back on so if we click on this little label up here, it effectively gets your phone out of your pocket. So aircraft of this era, yes, they don't have the glass screen, but most pilots that are using an aircraft like this would have some sort of device to strap on in the cockpit, to bolt on somewhere, whether it's a mobile phone or a, um, a Garmin of some description. So this is actually really cool. It gives you your, your 3D map, or sorry, your 2D map. You can also do the 3D vision through it as well, which is obviously borrowing from the simulator. So there you go, and we can obviously zoom in and out and use the buttons. And it's a touch screen. So when you're programming flight plans, it's really, you know, it's nice and easy to go and put the waypoints in. Okay, so we'll zoom out slightly. We're not actually going to program a flight plan because we're just doing a circuit today. 
So we can, obviously we've got all the normal controls around uh, being able to calibrate the altimeter, for example. Um, we can, we've got vertical speed, we've got a nav instrument, so nav radios up here that controls that. You've got your transponder over here, you've got the comm radio with a very old fashioned looking panel to configure it, but it works, so it's not a problem. Uh, manifold pressure, fuel gauges and things, and oil pressure, so it's all good. Uh, fuel gauges are up here, sorry. Um, so let's go and take it into the air. We're going to put the flaps on an intermediate setting for takeoff. And we'll see how we get on. So engine, uh, sorry, a parking brake is off. You will notice straight away the plane's rolling around a little bit on the suspension taxiing. I think this is probably the best simulation of ground handling I've seen so far. So you really can feel momentum in the undercarriage, in the landing gear. It really, really does work well. If we press space, this being able to sit up works very well. You can open the cockpit canopy as well. So everything works. There's a little lock down this side. Oops, I'm just done. One of the problems of using the mouse to look around is it takes precedence then over the rudder. So you can have issues like you just saw where I went zooming off the taxiway almost. Okay. Press F to centre our view up. Press space. So we can still see the airspeed. So we're just coming around to Romy 24 at Booker. We've got live weather on. There's a small element of tailwind this morning, but mostly a crosswind. So we will see the aeroplane drift off away from the centre line as soon as we leave the ground. But we're not going to worry too much about that. Full throttle. So coming up through 40 knots. and raise the flaps as we go through 80 knots and we're good to go so I'm going to take off that rudder I was imparting some rudder then to keep a straight line so you can see we're being pushed now away from the centre line quite drastically so that's that crosswind we're just dealing with okay so we're going to just roll round we're coming up to a you can see on the instruments, just coming up to a thousand feet, and we're turning gently. We have a turn coordinator, which is quite useful. It's going to do a gentle le left turn around to 60 degrees, which is the reciprocal of the runway at Puka. Come up for 1500 feet on the altitude. The aircraft flies on trim very nicely, so you can trim it very easily. So I'm going to cut the engine back to 50% now. Just coming around to 60 degrees. Trimming it out slightly. The wind is really blowing us around today. Yeah, you can see that crosswind look is pushing us back across the airfield. So we're going to crab into it slightly to hold a course. So you can see the runway over there that we just took off from. So we're going to wait until the runway is behind us and then turn back in. Obviously the plane is trying to rotate or weathercock back round into the wind so we're having to keep an eye on it flying this kind of 75-ish degree course. So have a look outside. It's a really nicely modelled aeroplane and it behaves really well in the air as well. So there really is quite some crosswind, isn't it? Not really ideal for showing off an aeroplane. I should have really turned the weather off. But it's good because you get to see, you know, if you have to struggle much with it in these kind of conditions. OK, 
okay so we'll just turn it back around Airfield as we come around. So the wind is go as we go downwind here. The um, the wind is going to blow us past the runway, but we can always just crab back and it'll be fine. Yeah, it's just taking us beyond the runway. So I think it's about a ten knot crosswind I'm dealing with. A little, maybe a little bit more. Okay, so we'll just come off the. Well, we'll leave the throttle as it is, we're just going to drop the flaps to an intermediate position. So the flaps have two positions, intermediate and full. So this is going to be a fun landing, isn't it? So we're going to <laughs> look sideways out of the cockpit to come in. So full flaps. plane is trying to weather cut quite alarmingly but we're just holding it on the crosswind holding 80 knots quite a steep descent to come in and hold it over the runway whoa look at that crosswind but this is good it's um for a trainer this is fantastic to see this happen to know that you'd have to deal with it so we're back on the ground almost there we go. Full right rudder. And we're just going to stop in time. That was a, a dicey landing. So not ideal conditions to show off an aeroplane. And you could see we were battling the wind, which was doing its best to keep us aloft all the way down the runway. So we can raise the flaps as we taxi back. So yeah, this is, you can see it has all sorts of effects as well, with like kicking the dust up out of the grass, which is great. So yeah, this is the Scottish Aviation Bulldog in Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's €24.99, which works out at the current exchange rate about £20 or $20. Um, it's very, very good. Oh, sorry, twenty-five. About the same, twenty-five dollars, twenty pounds, or thereabouts. As I said, I flew it on a very long journey, the length of the UK. Um, it was absolutely great fun. Enjoyed it immensely. So we're just going to taxi down. It's the end of the airfield. You can see that nose floating around again on the suspension on the bumpy ground. It's very, very, it seems almost real. It's very good. So we just taxi in. Hopefully the vans and buses won't pull out in front of us. It would be nice if they didn't. Let's pull onto one of the bases. I think that person... Oops, someone's just spawned. And that bus is in our way, so we'll turn around. Just looking out my wing to see this person here. There we go. 
parking brake on. So typical of any of this sort of aircraft, you can just pull the mixture back to run the aeroplane air fuel to get rid of the fuel out of the engine. And then we can go and turn the magnetos off and we can turn off the alternator. We can turn off the lights. Doesn't take long to power this thing down. Turn off the avionics master switch and then the master battery. And we're pretty much done. So I'd note, I mentioned earlier, you can undo the, the canopy. So there's a lock handle here. And then once you've undone the lock handle, you can pull the canopy back. And obviously you get to see around the aircraft. But yeah, it's absolutely great fun. It's, and it's very reasonably priced and it behaves in a very realistic manner, or what I believe is a very realistic manner to the real aircraft so if you go and look online there's various pilots that have flown it that are saying yeah this version in flight simulator is very very good so there you go the scottish aviation bulldog in flight simulator it's very reasonable go and have a look at it go to black box simulation to download it it's really good okay that's it for me today see you soon